In one of the latest attempts to compare life in China with life in the U.S., a blogger has broken down what he considers the average cost of living in the state of California and generated a considerable amount of discussion on social media. But this poster of Chinese descent is doing quite well for himself these days, as very few people could consider a salary of $100,000 per year to be average. And nonetheless, let's take a look at his analysis. To begin with, his gross pay is about $8,333 per month before taxes. His federal income tax liability is around $1,252 per month. State income tax are roughly $603 per month, and Social Security withholds about $350 per month. Medicare obligations are about $120 per month, not counting whatever he might have to pay individually, and state disability insurance claims around $83 per month. And all that leaves him with approximately $5,921, or about 71% in net pay. Now before we get into expenses, let's see what some commenters on Weibo have to say about the 29% chunk taken right off the top. Well, as far as I know, only 8% of Americans now have an annual salary that's over $100,000. In fact, the current average annual income of an American family is about $50,000. So I don't think it's proper to make such a comparison. Now, let's take a look at the author's personal cost of living. Now, the biggest expense is housing, which falls into one of two categories. Now, if someone decides to rent a two-bedroom apartment, the writer says the outlay could run between $1,500 and $2,000 per month near the coast, or range from $1,000 to $1,500 further inland. Now, purchasing a residence is more complicated. Now, the price of an average piece of real estate in California is about $600 to $700,000, according to his estimate. Monthly payments depend on the length of the mortgage, and in order to allot $2,000 per month on a $700,000 home, for example, the buyer would have to sign at least a 30-year note, with the bank recouping a minimum of $20,000 in interest, although many lenders will seek an even higher amount. Property taxes also have to be accounted for and are projected at 1.25%, which equates to an additional $8,750 per year. Now, respondents in China are quite familiar with this issue and have a lot to say. Let's take a look at what they had in mind. From my personal experience, I think the expenses listed for children's education must be wrong. Before a child goes to college, the family doesn't have to pay much since education is free and compulsory until they graduate from high school. As far as supermarket shopping goes, I think it costs less than what the poster claims. I have to say that the main problem for Chinese people stems from high housing prices. The next item listed in the blog entry will be educational expenses for children. He places the annual price at around $30,000 to $40,000, which breaks down to between $2,500 and $3,333 per month. But we should probably assume that he's sending his kids to a fancy private academy because public school costs are largely covered by state taxes. Now, unlike places with widespread mass transit networks like New York, London, or Beijing, Californian families need automobiles to get around. And a new vehicle means another loan, probably in the $20,000 range, which would take five years to repay at a rate of about $350 per month. Now, someone can buy a used car instead, but might end up spending nearly the same amount of money on frequent repairs. Now, gas will drain another $150 to $180 per month. Other incidentals mentioned in the blog are supermarket shopping at $200 to $300 per month, mobile phones at $50 per person per month, cable television and broadband at $60 per month, not to mention individual choices like clothing, cosmetics, luxury goods, and entertainment. Now, his analysis led to a full spectrum of opinions being debated. Let's check it out. I think it still depends upon the place. For example, if people live in New York, then you know it will be expensive. But if people live in the state of Tennessee, they might be better off. Look at the expenses, especially the cost at the grocery store. It's so cheap. 
In a study not too different from this poster's effort, but much more thorough, the China Consumer Investment Group made some key comparisons between families in the two countries last year. Their estimates were that in China, both members of a couple have jobs 72% of the time, while the rate is 36% in America, and 28% of Chinese families have savings in the bank compared to just 5% in America. And rent consumes 12% of a Chinese family's income, but 30% of American families' money. Food and life necessities account for 29% of a Chinese budget, but only 17% of American families' funds. And clothes get 11% worth of attention in China, but a mere 6% in America. Now, some commenters have looked at the numbers and reached their own interpretations. And here's what they have to say. I don't think everything he posted is correct. Although he talks about tax rates, he doesn't mention tax deductions and tax credits. As far as I know, about 47% of Americans don't pay federal taxes. Besides this, I have to point out that how much tax should be paid is dependent on situations, such as whether a couple has an annual salary of $100,000 or if the amount is earned by a single person. Thinking about the situation in Beijing, I think the cost of education is similar, but I feel that everything else is more expensive in Beijing than in California. Another survey was conducted by a newspaper in Liaoning province. The publication looked at spending by residents from the city of Changchun in 2009, where the average annual salary is 120,000 yuan, or about $20,000. Now, the authors actually split the year into four seasons, trying to determine whether timing has a significant impact on finances. And what they found was that families tended to spend the most, or about 16,000 yuan, or a little less than $2,700 during the third season. Life can be expensive wherever people may live. <laughs> 